sniper zambos. Vampire nests. This, this game's, game's gonna, gonna get, get real intense. Boo armor. Boo armor. Hey kittens, welcome back to Boob Armor with Sunshine and Finger Wiener. Yeah. You can say Finger Wiener. I know, you I don't need to introduce me. myself. I do introduce you. I know. I'm a fucking gentleman. I introduce my hot date for the episode. Oh. Oh. Alright, let's see what happens. <laughs> it's your turn to narrate. Okay. As time zoomed forward, all of a sudden the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. Shook hands. Asked questions. So how do you feel about living on your own at such a young age? Oh. Uh. Oh. Did you just pick one? No. I'm so sorry about your father, your grandfather passing away. It all, it hit, bruh! It really hit us all hard. I think there's a time limit. Oh, well. So, we're just gonna have to go for it. Thank you for your condolences. Do you have any college plans? Yes, I do. I feel like that question came with, don't I? But blah, 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 blah. Oh, it is on a timer. Okay. What do you think will happen to the company now that your grandfather's passed? Uh... Say. It will get back on track soon. What do you think of the philanthropic philanthropic policy the company has? I'm thirsty. It's a policy. Yeah. Do you think the company should expand from just toys? What do you think, though? Uh, sex toys. Is that an option? I'm gonna leave now. Um, no. It's a toy company. It's a possibility. Eventually, the question stopped, but I was back to being myself. Naomi and Susie were ming- oh, it's your turn. Naomi and Susie were mingling in the crowds, and the incubi were doing their jobs, so I was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Oh, God, it's the CEO's son or whatever. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Oh, he looks like a fuckboy. With my mother stood a man who looked only a couple years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Please, simply nod to him. Blow him off. Andrew was slightly taken aback, but gently smiled and lowered his hand with a nod in return. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized the party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. Ha <laughs> ha. I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all, all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. Ha <laughs> ha. Douche canoe. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. Go with that gut feeling. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone... It, uh... Uh, next to me was my dad, giving a stole, cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. That's kind of pointing to Andrew's finger. It's you. No, oh, it's so you're Jared's son. Andrew's body twitched slightly, whether it was fear or insult. Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break at the wrong word. <laughs> You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Well, I stared at Andrew. The guy wanted to take my grand... Stop it, Siri. To take my grandfather's place as CEO, I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. 
I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. Of course not, sir. His voice is going to change like 15 times. Yeah. I apologize. And polite as well. Interesting. If, if you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. Stay put. With the parents... I watched as he disappeared into the crowd toward the back of the house. I was worried, but I gave him his space. He obviously needed it. Puh, he's not CEO material. That's because you practically interrogated the young man. A little questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make a scene with my dad. One wrong word and he'd lecture me in front of everyone. That was not something I wanted at my housewarming party. I let out a sigh before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight, meaning oh. the party... What if Andrew's the bad guy? It's totally possible. What if... Oh, we should have followed him. What if he's I know picking a fight with our boyfriends? Him. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn. Damn. All right. Lord, my gaze. Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh, it must be Lewis's car. I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can escort your guests out together. Yes, Mom. My mother left my dad and me to slowly escort the guests out. My dad held his simple smile as he thanked each person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed... Okay. Eventually, only Susan, <coughs> Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Oh. Thank you, Dad. Keep it up and you'll be a good CEO. Oh, right. All right. You're... Oh, no. This, see, that's what happens when we don't go after the guy. What happened? We get the dad approves achievement. Oh. All right, your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. All right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something, all right? Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. Will not. I don't want to go see Dad. All four of my remaining guests left the building, but my dad, all but my dad, waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Phew, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. Ugh. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it didn't take long to find you little shits after all. Ah! I felt a hot shudder down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ears. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to calm me. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. I wasn't worried about that. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Fight, fight, fight! All of us shot our heads toward the doors, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would never have expected to see. Okay. I don't know. It could be him. Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold, piercing into mine, roughened up clothes and pistol in hand. I saw a monster. Oh, <laughs> a hot female monster. I covered my mouth to not scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck as he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Ah, uh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of... <laughs> All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and pulled the trigger. Ah! No! See, this is what happens when we don't do Tai Chi. Ah! You take and do... do no, you keep making me Oh, leave. come on! Okay. 
We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face. But. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> what? What's with his face? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its, its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. That's, that's, that's hearing loss. <laughs> Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that disappeared into the air. The, pre the previous owner of this had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix, that was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Ma Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by magic? It would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around the house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Malix's face grew to that of extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. Was that glass breaking? With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Get out of my head. Fuck off! Yeah. Malix suddenly laughed wildly, staring at me in disbelief. Ha 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 ha! Whoa, whoa! Who let the bitch out of her cage? <laughs> Whoa! What is this? A reverse harem or something? <laughs> Hit him! Is him an option? Malik grinned at me evilly, walking close to me. Uh, duck? Can I say no. duck? All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hair and pull it back. Damn quickly. it! Why couldn't I say duck? Uh, his eyes bored into mine. He's a cackle in my face. Hey, let her go! Sam! Eric! I don't like dudes. Within seconds, Sam and Eric had punched Malik square in the jaw, forcing him to let go of my hair. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malik's and back in their group. Grr. Come on, Sam. You and me right here. Let's go. Come on, asswipe. <laughs> However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a grip on Malik's shoulder. That's enough, Malik. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? Bitch slap his ass. The girl is gonna help you kill them, just not now. Not now. I stared as the girl spoke down at Malik. She looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malik, or me. There's five of them and two of us. Even if we come back with a gang, they have the place surrounded by human police. Then we shoot everyone. Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted, and it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come out and try to exercise us. Grrr. <laughs> <laughs> the two growled at each other as if they, could have used, if they could have used their magic. I could sense that a fire would glow underneath their teeth. Malix grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you... We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> <laughs> then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point in directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. Mm, step outside. I dare you. <laughs> Why couldn't we punch him? I know, right? With you that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I figure if we said duck, it's because we are about to deck him. Mm. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn and catch me. All five of them? Whoa, whoa. Are you all right? Yeah. Why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. 
Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. Grr. We should have we should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malik's left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in front in fear from his words. Malix, was he a demon? That son of a bitch isn't a demon. He's a devil. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called abyssal planes. <laughs> from the abyssal planes. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons like us know when to use our powers and when not to. You're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher ups in their order and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free will and don't rely on where they come from to use their powers. This was all so confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed and I happened to be landing right in the fucking middle of it. What do we do? <clears throat> You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when he la when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises and this one took the cake and being the most surprising I felt my head spin once again she gonna faint again what did I get myself into I hope not miss please don't worry we'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud grrr <laughs> I want to kick his ass right now until then we'll protect you as much as we can if Malix comes back we'll be here for you but what about going outside won't he like we said, you have a protection sp you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'll he'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that there was I was mostly safe from Malix. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malik did the same? Even more so, I was lost on how my grandfather knew about the magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. Yeah. Plenty of time. Sign. Plenty of time, as in next time on Blue Walkers, what she's trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, Dan. Alright. See you later, kittens. Have a good day! Yeah, that's all I'm good for tonight, man.